Are you already recording? Okay, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to uh, the joint CESD SSD seminar. Uh, the presenters today are, are two visitors who's been who've been with us for the last three or four days. They've met with some of you um, discussing their um, their work. Uh, it's Dr. Marco Foy and Dr. Roberto Contalonieri from the University of Milan. Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction, like their bios that they provided me with, and then I'll talk a little bit about why they're here, and then we'll get on with the seminar. So, uh, to introduce Marco, first of all, uh, Marco studied and worked as an IT technician uh, whilst doing an MSc in geology, so he's always had different interests from, uh, um, for a long time. Uh, a lot of interest in database and development of database-driven web applications. Uh, after graduation, he went to work in IT, um, got a sound understanding of GIS and cartography, and through his PhD, um, applied some of that through his geological um, research. Um, but he's always had this IT, this strong IT background, um, and he's very interested in model development environments and now API development for smartphones. Um, and the last thing he wrote on his bio was that in his spare time, he develops all these applications that allow Roberto to be invited to different places around the world to present them, so it's great that they can both come along on this occasion. Uh, Roberto Contalonieri, also a researcher at the University of Milan, um, degree in biology, PhD in agricultural ecology. Um, it turns out we both worked at the same place in Europe, uh, same institute, and we never knew until, <laughs> until he came here. Um, that's because we just spend our time behind the computer and not talking to anybody. Uh, and he developed a quite famous crop growth model called WAR, like a RISA 2000, but uh, we use some temperate conditions. Um, he's been working in rice-related studies for about 15 years. Uh, and this is his first visit to Erie. He's, um, so it's funny, he's been developing research on rice for 15 years, crop modeling, intensive studies, and the reason he's here is because of a smartphone app. <laughs> um, he has, he has a lot of publications on this, this area. He has a few patents on floating weather stations um, and other methods for um, you know, making field work a lot easier um, than, than it has been in the past. So the reason they're here is um, because of this smartphone app that they've developed, but also they have a lot of other interest in collaborating with us. So they've been talking to different scientists, seeing what's possible. The reason why I was so excited about this particular piece of work they've done is because uh, with Adam and with Tree we have a few projects that are all about rice crop monitoring. So it's using remote sensing and it's using crop models and databases to try and uh, model on a national scale area production yield, maybe even yield limiting factors. Um, and I just want to give a one slide introduction which will hopefully explain to you why leaf area index is such an important variable for us. And we're going to have a little demo later on of the app, but also I want to show you some of the other ways we've been trying to measure LAI in the field, and why this app is really going to, I think, make our life a lot easier if we can get it scaled up in the hands of technicians all across the country taking LAI measurements. Because the way we've been doing it so far on a research scale is very time consuming, um, expensive, and you know we need to find a way to cut costs and make it quick. And I think this is one great way of doing it. So why is LAI so important to us in what we do to try and estimate yield? Uh, this is a output from Horizon 2000, our crop model. Uh, this is the crop model simulating leaf area index throughout the year. So the, the plant is uh, established here on this day, day 180 of the year. It grows in the nursery, it's transplanted, and then the leaf area increases through the season to flowering, and then it decreases. And once you get to flowering, what you get then is the yield increase, and here we're measuring yield, the red line, and you get an estimate of the model of about 
six tons per hectare, for example. Um, this is the observed yield, so you see the model is overestimated. And this is typical with the rise of 2000, it overestimates because it's looking at the obtainable or the potential yield, not the actual yield. So what happens is, if we can get good realistic LAI estimates, like these two here, taken at different times during the season, they're considerably different from what the model was estimating, which means you can recalibrate the model, get a more realistic LAI um, signature, <coughs> and get a more realistic yield. So if you can get good LAI data into the model, you can get much closer to actual yield in your crop modeling. That's exactly what we need in the work we're doing uh, in, in the rice project and in the prism project in the DA. Um, this, of course, we can link with our satellite information because if we have many observations of LAI on the ground at the same time that we take a satellite image, we can correlate the two, extrapolate, and then develop yield estimates for every location where our satellite images are. So that's a really long introduction about why I'm excited that they're here. Uh, and so, having taken 10 minutes of your precious time, I should uh, invite Roberto to, um, to carry on with the talk and tell us all about Pocket AI. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. I'm sorry, my slide is still on the screen. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I will speak about this application, Pocket AI. Uh, it's an application for smartphone. It could work even on a tablet. For it in different areas. Um, okay. And with Marco, there are our names there, but uh, there are other people involved in testing, uh, in my team in testing the, the, this application and create conditions and comparing with other tools instruments like uh, separators and so on. And uh, this is our modeling lab at the University of uh, Milan. So, different index. It's defined as the total one-sided area of this tissue per unit ground surface. And it's a key variable for uh, our environmental studies because it's involved in, uh, uh, for example, in um, estimating the amount of radiation which is intercepted by the canopy. So, we need to calculate for synthesis. Estimate synthesis. And then for it was important for plant water requirements for the fluctuation. And uh, on CO2 sequestration, the estimation of exogenous information in simulation models, like Andy was speaking about. And then for forecasting purposes, because in some peculiar situation, they are just using the um, for cereals uh, different, in the different index at the heating, so close to the maximum value for the green different index to directly estimate the yield and the end of the growing season. This is what happens in the um, weed yield forecasting system they have developed for Morocco. How to derive different index? Of course, it can be measured, so measured, by usually in two steps, collection of leaves, or the number of leaves, which is a representative of the population of leaves in your fields, and then measuring their area this can be done via dedicating instruments or acquiring and processing these images. You have to acquire the images and then to make some pre-processing and then to process the images with a computer. But this is very, very, very time consuming. Uh, these are called destructive planning method methods, very time consuming. But fortunately, different index can also be estimated. So they are not really measurements, but they are estimates. And uh, uh, this is one simple method and direct method for estimating different things. <coughs> there are unlimited relationships between uh, something which can be measured in the leaves, and uh, there are relationships that relate these two length and height of the leaves to the area of the leaves. So you don't need some process of images at the computer. But of course, also in this case, you know, a lot of effort required the time consuming of even in this case. And then there, are, there is another category of methods, indirect methods for the estimation of different index, which are based on the inversion 
of models for light transmitted and simple therapy. And uh, these methods are implemented in some commercial instruments, like uh, the LAI 2000 or the new one, LAI 2200. All centimeters, these are the most famous one, the Akubar and the Sunscan, very famous. And then there is this other instrument, not so known, which is called the CI100, which is basically has a camera here, and there is this bar, and here you have a laptop, like this, and you uh, see what the camera is on the laptop, is a uh, thing, and then you adjust some bars in a graphical user interface of the application of this instrument, and you, when you are sure that what is seen, the, um, the sensor is exactly the gap fraction, which is the, the pixels of sky uh, compared to the pixels of links, you say, okay, let's calculate the gap fraction and the leap index. And then there is the hemispherical camera. And we will show you something about this. But according to our experience, these two categories of tools are the only ones that are suitable for extensive campaign because you get uh, immediately an estimate of different index without post processing of the, the information acquired and so on. So, how they work? First, they are quite expensive. This is a problem. The uh, septometer, the most economic model of septometer, is about four. $4,500, whereas the new version of the LA 2000 can reach this uh, figure. They are characterized by low portability because if you go into the field with the cases, okay, it's something like this, so you have to go around, the, let's imagine in okay, the extensive campaign, a lot of fields, plots, you measure, you go around with this tool, and uh, they are, okay, even the, 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 the size is not so low. Moreover, this is an important point, uh, the, the, the maintenance service is uh, long and expensive. Expensive, okay, what can I say? Not so important, but it's long. If, you, if your instrument gets damaged during the campaign, in the middle of the campaign, for sure you will never be able to get it repaired before harvest. So the campaign this is, can be interrupted. This is another disadvantage of these instruments. Whereas smartphones, okay, the production volumes of smartphones are surely a, a bit, just a bit uh, larger than those of the septometers and the LA 1000. And the competing pressure among the producers is leading them to, 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 to introduce in the devices uh, wonderful hardware. So, high quality sensors and uh, computational capability for a few hundred dollars. This is because of games and other recreational activities. And so, everybody is buying these devices because of these. But, okay, they are selling a lot of these devices because of games, uh, Facebook, and so on. But this makes the price to get down. And so, we can get for really a few hundred dollars. Uh, Small computers in sensors. Uh, okay, this is uh, the, the way Marco is using the smartphone. Uh, basically, the, the, the possibility of making a receiving telephone call is becoming somehow secondary. Okay, and uh, so let's go back to these indirect methods for different index estimation. They are based on the inversion <coughs> of these light transmitters models that relate with the graph fraction and the Lifer index. This is the gap fraction. The blue pixels, this is an awful image, uh, are the gap fraction. You have here all the pixels of the image, and the pixels corresponding to the sky is the gap fraction. And this gap fraction is related to different inlets by using different models. This is the most, fa most famous one. So, the custom model for random spatial distribution of infinitely small leaves. This is the equation. This is the Lifer index, this is the gap fraction. Okay, you see immediately that there is this uh, theta, which is the probe angle. Okay? And then there is this k, which in these models is not the